do yeah. is adore you all of the time. I'd like to. the cave today a lot of you guys have been commenting and saying why don't I just buy a wheel bearing and get someone to press it it's cheaper to not to it's cheaper to go there and take the whole arm from the records like 50 bucks so that's what I was doing and I had success when I did it the first time so I just figured we'll do it again but I don't feel like going back there for a third time and getting another wheel bearing so I went out bought a wheel bearing I dropped it off at the shop this morning and they said they're hopefully gonna be able to press it today which will be ideal so now we have a brand new one in there. There's not one with 200,000 kilometers that's gonna blow soon because it's already halfway blown. We did it kind of more properly today, which is good. And then while we're waiting for that to happen, we're actually on our way to, to see something that we might buy. It's not like the most exciting news for you guys, but it's definitely something that I've been needing and something I've been looking at. And today we found something, like today we found one that I think will be a good fit. I just hope it's like as nice in person as it was on photos. Okay, it's right up here. Don't pass it this time. I don't see Alex for a while. I don't see very much. 151 Where the heck is it? Not a bad place to be lost though. Like these are some Gucci houses yeah. Like really nice houses. There we are <laughs> But he's just docking right now. We're just taking it Yo the boys are rolling. What boys are rolling? I like to love you if I may, I'd like to love you, love you. I'd like to love you, love you. I'd like to love you, I and they. Dude, check this out. Alright, you got that up first try? I'm proud of you. That was good. Because last time when we had the trailer, it was a lot shorter and it was a little bit harder to see, and it took Brad like. Three tries to get it up? Yeah. That was the first try. That was pretty good. Okay, this morning we picked up a, a little project that we're just gonna have some fun with. Mainly we have a lot of stuff that's been collecting and like going to pick up the, the motor for the S10, like we went and picked up the LS. We still need a transmission, we still need a bunch of stuff and I really don't like borrowing things from people. And like from all the deliveries and stuff we get to the house, I have just this pile of wood here just from like skids and boxes and stuff. And I have all this just like plastics and metals and stuff that's all gotta go to the dump. It's all just like, leftovers from projects and things that we do. I'm the kind of guy that buys a truck and says I want to use it to do these kinds of things and then I go ahead and tear the motor out put an LS in it. Today we went up and we picked up a trailer. Dude look how big this thing is. So originally we went up to pick, we, I was looking for like a utility trailer. I was gonna get something that was like smaller like four by six or something. Yeah. Something that was like just big enough that we could dump all like the metals and woods and all our stuff that was kind of like junk or when we needed to pick something up we could just kind of take it in there but I found this thing for such a deal that we could not pass it up. So this thing used to be like a tent trailer. It used to be like a pop-up trailer and the guy literally took it and took the pop-up part off of it and then it's just the flat deck and he sold it to us for like dirt cheap. There's been nothing done to it yet. It's still literally just the deck from where the pop-up sat. Like it's got like the resin on the floors and kind of like stains from where the water tanks and stuff were but it's pretty hooked up. Like there was a battery in the front. There was little propane tanks. There's like lines and all electrical and everything's run underneath it, which is cool. We're gonna have fun with it, it's gonna be nice. Oh yeah. So ideally we're gonna take this thing and we're gonna make like little walls on it. I wanna weld like just, uh, would you call it a wall? Fence I guess so. It. Yeah, like a fencing kind of thing. So I wanna replace the floor because the floor is kind of custy and then just put like a little fence around the whole outside, probably flip this axle, that way it sits a little bit higher and there's less of like a wheel well bulge. We're, and There won't be any wheel well bulge. Is that, is that how, what we decided, there'll be no bulge? That'd be sweet. So then there's no bulge, just a big old flat trailer. And then we can put a little gate at the end and it will be like ideal for picking stuff up and taking stuff to the dump and it's just good to have. It also entices toys. We get a couple ATVs. <laughs> We're not gonna do anything with it today. We just went out and picked it up this morning. It'll be fun. I like changing it up too. Like we've never built a trailer. We've never done anything like that. So it'll be a cool project in itself. It's like, Robbie, you have nine projects on the go. <laughs> like quit getting more. Well, this is a project to clear space for more projects. Like really, they don't see any of it, but like all that stuff is just junk and it's, I just hate looking at it. Yeah. It just builds up and it's gross. Like every time I look out my window, I see this. I don't want to see this. Do you say he texts you and the wheel bearing's done? Yeah. Do you want to go get the wheel bearing? Yeah. And then we also have something else that showed up for the Civic today, which is cool. We've been telling you I want to put some trim on this and I finally have the trim showed up, so I'd like to do that today too. Just kind of make it pop, get it drivable again. I still don't have tires for my wheels, but I'm kind of going through a process with that right now. There's obviously obviously reasons why I don't have tires yet, but I promise they're coming. 
I'm not neglecting it. I just we're working through some stuff. What would be really funny is if we could get that trailer like built, but also light enough that we could tow it with the sieve. That'd be ideal. <laughs> that would be so funny. If I just put a box of rice, I'll just strap a box of rice right to the middle and then put a little wing on the box of rice. No, like those big massive bags of rice. Oh, like the 50 pound yeah, bags. Yeah, that would be yeah. funny. So funny, we go to like Costco or something, just back the thing right up to the front, get like eight bags of rice. <laughs> is when the FedEx guy shows up and I have no idea the FedEx guy showing up and I have no idea what he has and he just brings me gifts. I'm pretty sure this is a gift from my boys at DSG. They have boxes, I don't know what's in them. Fire it up. Hey, heck yeah it is dude. Ooh, that looks like it'll be a good one. That's tight. I like it. Boys? Boys are rolling right now. DSG is the guys that supply the Karma Kits now. They're an official retailer in North America and they're helping us out a lot with the BRZ build. So definitely make sure you guys are checking them out. If you guys haven't been paying attention to the BRZ build and all that stuff going on, regardless. I get people ask me all the time where to buy car parts. Check out DSG. So we picked this guy up. It's fully repaired now. We have no more blown wheel bearing. It was a lot, a lot more expensive than just going out and getting one from the junkyard, but it worked. This thing's gross, dude. Just from, actually the camera can't really tell how gross it is, but it's gross. We also stopped on the way home. It's like a really big mess around when you get a trailer like this. This is like a, like you built is what they call it. Like we built it essentially, cause we're going to, but like we actually stopped and got it insured already, which was cool. I didn't think we were gonna do that. So we got like papers and a plate and everything, which is tight. But okay, so last time we were working on the Civic, I went out and I bought that control arm or not control arm. I bought this whole arm and then I bought the whole knuckle and like wheel bearing assembly and stuff. And it was from the wrong car. Um, it had been swapped or something. I don't really know what we consensed on because a lot of people said a lot of different stuff. Essentially, it's the one with ABS brakes. I don't have ABS brakes, but this one is supposed to. So the car will not move without driving it. Like, you can't roll it. It's under too much force. The size of the rotor in the, in the caliper for this car is jamming. Like, it just, it won't spin. So I literally have to start it and move it around because I can't just push it around, which is terrible. It's not good. So we're gonna swap this guy back on there. This is the original one. I got the proper bearing put in. We did it the right way. We're not messing around anymore. And then once I get the tires, we should be able to drive this thing. But also something really cool showed up the other day in my pile of boxes. So I already opened one of these because I didn't know how many I was gonna need and I on, on, obviously well, I wanted to make sure it was gonna work before because like buying the trim is really tricky. So a lot of you guys are asking me like where to get this trim because you saw it on my Instagram and you're like, where do I get this? And this is from Amazon and this is like the Bushwhacker fender flare trim. It's meant for like Bushwhacker flares on a truck. It's got like a little pinch design on it, which essentially should tuck behind the fender. When you look at it, you think like, oh yeah, that makes sense, it tucks behind. It also doesn't make sense because if it just grips like this, then from the top of the body kit, you see that. So what we actually have to do is push it in extra so that this completely opens itself up flat. More like this. And then the little T is in the top. It's weird, it's not like the most ideal, but I couldn't find anything else. But yeah, like we'll have to take it right off. Mm -hmm. You have to back the kit off and do it all, but it'll look way better. I'm hoping that that, that will help the kit pop a lot because you, you notice it, but it, it was always missing that little bit of extra black. So I'm hoping that putting the trim around it, it's one, it's just an important thing to do. Anybody that has like a wide body kit will pretty much tell you. It'll protect the paint and it'll also, in this case, protect the dip from getting like kind of ruined. And it'll add like a really nice pop. It'll make the whole car just like super pop, which is cool. But first let's do this wheel bearing. There's no point making this car look any prettier if we literally can't even drive. Dude, it's gotta be tighter than that. Well, I, it didn't work, so I knew it was coming well, off. You know? You just want it tight enough yeah. to still. I was just trying to get it on there to get the car out of the garage because I, I needed to make room for the BRZ, yeah. but this was pooched. I'm gonna go ahead and say that when I was dipping this car, I did a fantastic job. But when you were dipping this car, you oversprayed everywhere. <laughs> Those two coats I let you do, you oversprayed everywhere. But when I did it. That's character. When I did it, no overspray. It wasn't me. Definitely wasn't me. My, my coats were perfect. Yeah, dude, the squealer just destroyed the freaking rotor. Backside's okay. The That's front right. side, definitely not happy. Right here, look, this is the only difference. This one hub is too thick. 
Mm. So the, my brake won't fit over this. My brake needs to fit over this, and then the bigger brake jammed up. Yeah. Like, that's it. The rest of it's identical. That was quick. Like, that, it, it's really not hard. It's just a no. pain in the ass that I had to do it again. Yeah. And this time it cost me like 150 bucks. Okay, so that was easy. Thankfully, it's done. I know a lot of you guys are going to be super happy that I did that the, like, proper way now. And then as far as the trim, I think it should be actually relatively easy. And then I think each box has, like, 35 feet. I don't think we'll use that much. Like, I think it should just go like this front one, and then you know, there's no point in putting one on the one down there because it's not rubbing on anything. And then just the rear ones. So it shouldn't be too much. I bought this thing from Duraflex. I know a lot of you guys keep asking me where I got this from. It's from Duraflex, and it gave us a headache when we installed it. And if you look at it, you guys think it looks mint because that's the angles I show it to you guys. But if you get up close, I mean, I'm sure nothing's perfect, but like the whole kit's kind of like this where it, it gaps and then touches and then gaps and then touches. And there's, there's not much you can do about that. Like it looks good when you're far away. It looks good from head on. The front is very, very good. Hopefully this will kind of make that look a little bit more seamless too and just make it pop. Honestly, I think this 35 feet like... Do you have another box of it too? Yeah, I got a bunch. I didn't want to run out. So I bought as much as I possibly could. A lot easier than I thought. Yeah, so like I, this is what I was saying. So it looks like you just do this, right? Yeah. But then you get this really weird ridge. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is if you just continue to shove it down deeper, if you just flip it up like that and then slide it down in the groove, it'll sit like this and it'll be like flush. This isn't where I want it. So I don't want it to slip too far in, but you know what I mean? You'll just see the top. Yeah. I think that's kind of what we're going for here. That looks good right there. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to get it to stay. So we're having trouble getting this to sit because every time you push it in, which like seems like it would work, but once you do it in a long strip, it kind of wants to pull out. So what I did was like the piece right here with the two-way tape, I cut the tape part off so that it's just a T. And then it looks like this and it's like just a T. It kind of just slips in there. And then if you push on it and you pull, like it, it's in there, like it's not going anywhere. So I think this is probably better just to take this whole thing and cut the tape off. Obviously it'd be more ideal to have it taped in, but like, what are, you, what are you gonna do, right? Cause like with this L, what's happening is every time we shove it in, it's just expanding back out. Yeah. And by the time I get enough of it in there to get over here, it's popping out over there, mm -hmm. so. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay it over here, figure out how much we're gonna cut so you don't cut up the whole thing. So I'll cut it like here. Okay, yeah. That's a lot of extras. I successfully butchered this trim. <laughs> That's the whole tape part. This is the whole knot tape part. Should theoretically all work out way better now. Yeah, I probably still won't like that bend, but. I, think I call that pretty minty right there. Yeah. We're gonna need to come back to it when we do the final tighten. Yeah. Cause it's gonna come loose, but like that's a nice wrap. That really is. You just need to tighten it to make this stay. Dude, the whole thing, the whole kit's on, and this is how much trim we have left. Thank God. So I don't have to open another box, I only had to use the one box. But okay, this last corner literally just took me over an hour to do. One of the rib nuts actually came came out of the bumper, so because it's plastic, rib nuts have a hard time gripping. And I was tightening the nut, and like the actual rib nut part just popped out of the plastic, so it's kind of a mess. Like, all in here is like not, you can see tape coming through, because I tried to tape it there just to keep it sort of in place. But this rib nut pulled right through, so this is really loose. So there's no tension on this, so it's not like pinching, like up here how it's pinching this. This won't pinch, so until I can get Brad to come back over here tomorrow with the rib nut gun, and I can like get this in there so that this is all tight and sits nicely, that's not gonna work. And the gas door had this really weird gap. Um, this is the biggest gap on the whole kit. So I actually laid a bunch of glue underneath this, and then I taped it down, hoping the glue will kind of dry it to there. That's obviously a very permanent solution. But like, I think I think it's gonna be fine. Because there's some pretty big gaps, but for the most part, they've worked. And like this tail light, you can kind of see like where, what it's supposed to look like on the other side. Like it's supposed to just look normal. This side, like I said, I just, I popped a rib. We're gonna air this behemoth out quick here. <laughs> That's a lot better. Dude, look how good this looks. I'm actually so happy that we made that stuff work. I was so nervous when it like wasn't working at first, but, with cutting it back there, we got it to fit around the corners, got it fit like right up into here, all the way up and around. It just makes it look so much cleaner and it makes it pop. Like if you're standing here, you see that this is wide. Like you now notice the wide body, 
Whereas before it just kind of blended in and it gives it that little bit of extra black. It kind of cuts the yellow. I think that's, I think it's so good. It's just enough different from the yellow to give it just a little extra pop. But I actually think it went on really nice. Like there's no really weird spots other than the other side, but like for overall coverage in spots that aren't broken, I think it looks sick. I think we're gonna give a quick to the trim and the wheel bearing. Oh, and Brad put like 5,000 check marks beside have fun. So much has happened in the last couple months. Like just look at what I look at when I stand in my garage now. Like how nice is this dude? Obviously, this is not done. It still needs love, but even this isn't done. Like it, it's not even close. Right now, I am a satisfied customer. I'm a, I'm a happy, satisfied customer right now. So that's it, that's all I'm gonna have for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys next time. If you don't see me for a couple days, I feel like a bag of poo right now. I feel like I'm getting sick real fast here, so if you guys don't see me for like a couple extra days, that's why, I'm just giving you a heads up. I might be fine, but as of today, I'm not really feeling great, so. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Stay committed. Why?